Hello everyone, we hope you're doing very well. Today we're doing the buyer's guide slash the review for the Gazelle module on DCS World. Now to keep it uniform and comparable with the other reviews that we've done, we're going to use the same structure. One, we're going to look at capability, the weapons, sensors, nav and miscellaneous. Two, we're going to look at the visual effects, the interior of the helicopter and the exterior. We're going to rate that between 1 to 5, 5 being the best, and this way we can compare it roughly empirically against other modules in DTS. To do the comparison, please visit the score sheet as linked in the video description of this video, and you'll see at the bottom tabs for all of the different modules, and not just my rating, but the other members of DC, uh, sorry, GR as well, so you won't just get my uh, opinion, it's everyone's opinion, uh, to make it more fair. Three sound effects, the sound effects inside the cockpit and exterior, again rated one to five. Four, interactivity in detail, rated one to five. How interactive is the cockpit? How many buttons can you press? How many knobs can you pull? Uh, what does it feel like to do them? Do they actually do something? Do they work? What are the systems like behind those knobs? And so on. Five, flight model. And like the other planes, not necessarily how accurate the flight model is, not how realistic it is, but much more importantly, how immersive it is. How does it make me feel like I'm flying a real helicopter and not a video game? Are there any weird things that happen with the flight model that, that break your immersion, make you feel like it's not a real helicopter? And so on. Again, rated one to five. Six, difficulty. This is not going towards the ratings, but it is one to five. One being easy, five being very hard. How difficult roughly is it to pick up this module, install it, learn how to use 99% of its functions and use it well, just to give you, you know, an idea. Seven, history. Just roughly speaking, since it came out 2016 now, how many problems has it had? Has it been one of the, you know, DCS is a constantly evolving program. Some of the modules age well, some don't. Some have problems, some don't. Is this the one that has lots of problems, or is, what, is it one that's been roughly problem-free? And we'll talk about that. And then a quick summary. Okay, welcome to the world of the Gazelle. So if you buy the Gazelle module, you get four variants that you can fly, each specialized for different capabilities. So we've got the Lima, the Mike, the Minigun, and the Mistral. We'll go through them one by one. First, the Lima. Each of these variants is laid out slightly differently, with a different dash, slightly different capabilities. The main armament for the Lima. On the right is a M621 20mm autocannon and on the left we have some rockets. Let me go look at that there and if we go to the armament screen we can see that our rockets are these chaps here eight times that there. I think they're 68mm but I stand to be corrected. I'm up with them. Additionally the gun is non-transferable. We have to have the gun. We can have pylons five and six there. Six is a IR deflector to reduce our IR signature to help mask our heat signature and we can also have a sand filter if you want. The gun is not aimable as such, both the rockets and the gun are hard mounted to the helicopter so wherever I mount, wherever I aim the helicopter is where I aim the guns and the rockets. On, 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 240 rounds in the gun. Get some. It's a pretty good gun. See if I can get the rockets working. It's been a while since I did this. <laughs> okay, so that's the Lima variant. Let's have a quick look around the cockpit. It is a pretty cool, sexy looking cockpit. Uh, but just remember where the lights are. Okay. We've got a modern RWR here that will alert us to any hostile radar sources like uh, fighter planes coming in or SAM sites. So that's a bit of a lifesaver. In terms of radios, it differs for which model we're in, but let me have a look. But a VHF in this Lima version, we've got a VHF radio here. If I get rid of the pilots, and if I jump in the co-pilot seat, we've got, I think this is a UHF down here. Yep, uh, I think that's a UHF radio there. And we've also an FM radio somewhere. I think it's this guy down here. The workload split between the pilot and the co-pilot, or the gunner, if you might want to call this guy, weapons operator. Got a FM radio down there. So VHF, UHF and FM here for contacting the ground troops. In terms of navigation, these helicopters are pretty well sorted, really well sorted actually. You've got ADF down here for homing into radio beacons, NDBs. And at the front, let's jump back. Here you've got the Nadir system. This is a, it's been a while since I studied this. I can't remember whether it's a Doppler, ground Doppler system or ground Doppler and INS system. I think it's ground Doppler only, but I stand to be corrected. If it is then the way it, 
functions in terms of what we care about. It's similar to a typical INS system. It'll have waypoints. You'll be able to add waypoints, take away waypoints, move waypoints, and stuff like that. So it's a good, really good modern system for a helicopter. And it's a pretty early helicopter as well. It was, uh, what, 1970s. We also have countermeasures on this aircraft. The, the ability to send out flares. We'll have a look at those on the exterior. Can't remember how to use them anymore, but the, we have the ability to program uh, flare programs for usage for countermeasures. We have the ability, to, as you saw, to occupy different seats. So we can occupy the pilot seat. We can fly from here. We have the ability for the co-pilots or the gunner seat. Um, we can fly from here and we can use uh, the weapons from here. We'll go through that in the next variant. As well as that, it is a multiplayer, multi-crew helicopter. So that if we go a multiplayer, one human can occupy that seat and one human can occupy this seat here. At the time we're making this, August 2019, that's not actually not working at the moment, which is very frustrating. It hasn't been working for several months. We will try and push them to get it sorted. But um, yeah, just be aware. As you can see, the visibility is excellent. And this is uh, one of the less roomy variants here and you still get amazing visibility. Let's go and check out the next variant. So they're all similar but different weaponry and slightly different avionics depending on which version. So this is the mic version. This instead of a gun and rockets this has guided anti-tank weapons. Let me uh, go and have a look. Missiles. We've got the Hot 3 ATGMs for taking out armor. I think we can take out, uh, use up to four of them and as well as that Pylons 5 and 6 will be the same as we had last time. The way these will work, I mean, well, firstly, they're guided missiles that will be used to take down ground vehicles. The way we would use this is we would fly the helicopter until we had our targets in range, which is about four, four and a half kilometers. Then, being the pilot like this, we would attain an auto hold where the helicopter was stable. We would then, assuming that we were flying on our own, otherwise we could just use the second human on multiplayer, we would jump over to our co-pilot seat and we would use this little guy here been a while since I've done this, so just see if I can remember how to do it. There we go, look. You can use the um, optical sensor on the front to find a target. Let's see if we can remember how to do it. It's all coming back to me. Here. Lock onto a target like that. I can't remember exactly how you do it. And then we can fire a guided missile to that target there, which is pretty cool. And that will take out tanks. And like I said, um, the avionics down here is different for each variant. So the, the FM radio has gone and you've got stuff here to do with the weaponry. I can't remember exactly what it is. And down here, weapons on, armament panels gone and uh, some other changes down here. But I can't remember each variant perfectly. I've got the next variant. If we go for the minigun, my favourite. So look how minimal this is. This is fantastic. Look, the, uh, the view you get here is second to none in this helicopter. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, to fly this thing so it's got the, the 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 most sparse amount here we're missing lots of avionics here but the minigun this is all that this needs so we can fly as the pilot we can fly as the co-pilot or we can fly as the minigunner and of course you want me to see me shoot the minigun don't you so let's arm that baby up and we can use our track ir terrible sounds i don't know i don't know how they made such an awful sounding minigun but quite pretty cool right what we can do is we can get our human guy to fly, sorry, get our AI pilot to fly around in circles or fly in a straight line. We can get back here and just get some. Get some. That will probably do it in a bit. Get some. So that's pretty cool. Back to the front. Let's go and have a look at the last variant. Probably the most useful variant is the Mistral. Really useful in our campaigns that we use because it is an anti helicopter helicopter. We've got Mistral missiles. Well, we haven't got them armed up yet. We've got these guys here, Mistral missiles. I guess they're a bit like a somewhere between a Stinger and a Sidewinder type missile. Uh, they're air-to-air. -air. They're IR guided with a passive IR sensor on them. In this case, that you would uh, get this crosshair here. You would point them towards a heat source, you know, a, a slow-moving aircraft. You can even shoot down fighter aircraft, technically. Slow-moving attack aircraft or a helicopter. And uh, once you get the tone, pull the trigger. Um, so you've got this guy. It's hunt to kill a helicopter then go out and hunt hinds down or apaches down or, or whatever you want to shoot you know it's pretty cool stuff so we've mentioned the weapons we've mentioned the multi crew and the different places that we can sit wow back seats i literally never knew because they all have back seats that really is amazing talked about the rwr talked about the three radios we've talked about the nandadir talked about the adf uh, flight instruments obviously so that's all i can think of mentioning we do not have uh, the ability to pick up and carry crates as uh, sling loading like we do with the other three helicopters in DCS at the moment but 
you know, it's a tiny light scout slash attack helicopter, so that simply wouldn't be suitable. So that's all for the capability. Next is for the visual effects, the graphics. Uh, this aircraft was implemented into DTS in what, late 2016, so about three years old. And that's just about how it feels, to be honest. Uh, it feels pretty good. One small complaint is that it's very dark. I don't like dark cockpits in DCS because they can be hard to see depending on your setup. I've got a dark monitor, so it's just one thing, but you can't really mark it down for that. That's just how it is. I've got the I've got the instrument lights on here, and to be honest, it looks really cool. It's one of my favourite looking cockpits, dashes, whatever you want to call it, uh, along with the C101. I think they're just really beautiful with the lighting and whatnot. Nice and high resolution, as you can see. All tucked together, nice and easy to see human looks pretty crap but all of the all the DTS humans look shit to be honest so nothing new there all that looks pretty cool oh I didn't even notice that what's that I don't know IFF I think but Nadia looks cool TV set looks cool. You know, the textures are they're good. They're good textures. Buttons are good, high definition polygons. It's all pretty cool stuff. Look around, uh, where else do we look? There's not much to it. <laughs> one thing to note, it's a very, very vulnerable helicopter. Literally, you can be shot down by one burst of a AK-47. I've had a few bullets of AK-47 blast my rotor off before. So if you're going to fly this helicopter, you've got to be able to not get hit. It's not going to soak up damage like the Huey. Window wipers, I wonder if you can turn them on. I haven't, won't try now, but. All looks really good, to be honest. You're going to pay you 50 bucks. You want this level of detail. Let's jump over to the other seat. Again, it's all a bit dark for my liking. Shadows cast very well. That's cool. Okay. Go and have a look outside. Apart from the humans, which look a bit... Yeah, they do look shit, don't they? There's no other way of saying it. We're used to things like armour humans, which do look good. These yes humans all look crap. But the actual helicopter... It's beautiful, to be honest. I love it. it looks so good. Look at that detail. I think that there is the TV sensor, I'm assuming. Oh, look at the little handle, look. It's even got the little key thing in there, that's cool. So those are, which variant? No, these are the Mistral missiles, look. Really good for shooting down, um, shooting down any, anything, to be honest. We even shot down missiles with these missiles. Look at that. That's a beautiful bit of, um, bit of metal there, though. Model. Really happy with that. Certainly can't complain about the way it looks. Little grill there, look. Not sure why it's got an American flag on there, but... Where's the intake? Is that that must be the intake though? Tiny little engine, but it's a very lightweight helicopter. Uh, depending where you look, it's somewhere between three quarters and 1.5 tons. I found. Must be where they put the gas in. Look, there's your flares.
Oh, it's deep, lad. Never really sat and close, uh, looked closely at this, but it really is a top quality, top quality graphically, isn't it? Really beautiful. So we have to give it a rating and I'm a big fan, I think it looks not perfect but really really good to be honest, right up there. Really high resolution, decent cockpit, really happy with it. Outside it's almost flawless, really like it. Uh, so I'm going to give it visuals a 4.5 out of 5. Next we're going to look at the sound, so I mean it obviously sounds good just like a real gazelle at the moment but I want to see how dynamic that sound is. When I'm putting the helicopter under stress, when I'm moving about. Can I get the rotors to make, you know, the slappy sound that the other helicopters do? How dynamic is it? Uh, what do the weapons sound like? Are they good or are they crappy? Damage sound effects. I mean, there's not a great amount of sound effects that I'm going to get from a helicopter. But we'll do our best and we'll look from inside and outside the helicopter. I guess, uh, let me just go and get some weapons quickly. Okay, let's take off, put it through its paces. Just, uh, just concentrate on the sound. Whee! I'm not a good gazelle pilot or a good helicopter pilot. I want to hear diff changes in that rotor sound when I put it under stress. Oops, the tail strike. I can't at the moment, I must admit. And stressing the turbine there so you can hear the turbine winding down so we've got that or you know whatever whatever it is you can hear the sound changing as I'm moving faster strangely I can't hear any sound when I'm kind of pulling pulling up or, or you know kind of putting the under rotors under real strain around these corners maybe this helicopter just doesn't make that sound in real life that may be the case so I have to be careful what I say but I'm just saying that all the other helicopters do make sounds when I pull tight like that and it's very satisfying when they do that but this one doesn't a little bit annoying but see what happens when I get some speed up and it is a very fast helicopter as well about 300 kilometers an hour or something See if we've got any wind noise. Hard to tell. Really hard to tell. Strange one. It is, it, it, there is some dynamics in there. When I'm going faster, I kind of get a bassier sound coming. Uh, I can stress the turbine and I can make the turbine speed up and slow down. That's the only kind of differences I can get in the engine sound. Let's try some flybys. It's a bit quiet, but it sounds about right. And the real hel helicopter isn't that loud. Put it under some strain. Sugar. This is a really bad idea. So there's a little bit of dynamic sound, but not enough for me. I mean, having flown the other helicopters, when you when I move them round, turn them in corners, pull up, pull down, you get big changes in the sound, and that really helps your immersion. And this one, yeah, like I said, when you're going fast, it adds a bit of sound. But I, when I do manoeuvres like that, I can't hear any difference. Let me know if you think I'm wrong. And that takes away from my immersion a bit, so, you know. Am I wrong?
Just doesn't seem to be there for me. And when it's speeding up, when the aircraft's got some speed, you can hear that speed, but... So it's, yeah, I mean, the sounds are there, they're good. You, the external sounds sound perfectly fine, like, as you'd imagine, a real helicopter. I just we had a bit more dynamics in the cockpit, personally, uh, to match the other three air... Uh, to match the other three aircraft. Um, that's that, weapons. Yep, just sounds like a big auto gun, doesn't it? I think it's the same sound effect as they use with the flanker from memory. Or similar. Get some rockets out. Ah, I haven't on any, on any rockets, silly cap. Um, let's just bang into the ground a bit. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah. They're okay. They're okay. The sound effects are perfectly adequate. I've got nothing really against them. I prefer a little bit more in the cockpit for when you're pulling, you know, tight, I don't want to say tight G's, but you know what I mean. Pulling aggressive moves like corners and stuff. Um, so I think I'm going to rate them 3.5. I uh, reserve the right to change these ratings at any point. And uh, the official score is what I will write in the sheet, which you can see at any time. The sounds are going to get to 3.5 for now. Next, we're going to look at interactivity in detail. So we're going to look at the cockpit controls. How many of them uh, can you interact with? Does it make little noises when you move the switches up and down? How does it feel? How are they modelled? How are the systems behind them? How many of these buttons are actually modelled? Can I click on? Uh, and that's what I mean here. So let's just turn some light on. It is dark in here. I can never see what I'm doing. Um, so where do we start? It's a long time since I've explored this helicopter, but let's just start looking. I don't know what that is, floodlight maybe, but can't touch that. That I can't change, I can't touch, which annoys me. I want to be able to turn that even if it doesn't do anything. Lights, levers, that lever I can't pull, it annoys me. Even if I, even if it doesn't do anything, I want to be able to pull that lever down. I paid my 50 bucks, I want my lever. Uh, the sights. Yeah, you can click on it. I guess that's all you need to do. There's nothing else up here. Nothing else up here. Main dash. Everything here works. I think everything there works. Everything here works. Warning lights. Page that. Uh, where's the altimeter? I can't see it. Uh, change that. Whatever it is. Rotor torque or something. Change that. Is that all of these are clickable and do their jobs from memory? <laughs> look, light test. E. Possibly the altimeter because I'm being an idiot. Oh, look, we've got the wipers on. We got the wipers on. Oh, I'm glad I showed that. Everything down here does anything from memory. Oh, look, one that doesn't do something. Nope, my bad. They all do something. That works. Autopilots. Yep. Whatever that does. Ah, something that doesn't do anything. La let me click it. I paid my money. Let me click it. Same thing, let me click it, even if it doesn't do anything. Let me click it. VHF radio. Stuff here that I can't click on. These are, I think these are the volumes. That one I can't change, FM2. Let me click it, let me click it, let me click it, let me click it, let me click it. There's a bunch of stuff here that I can't click on. A bunch of stuff here I can't click on. I want to be able to click on that. Even if it doesn't do anything, let me do it. None of this I can click on. I want to be able to click on it. Let me click on those buttons. Nadir is all clickable from memory. Weapons panel is all clickable on. No, it's not. I want to be able to click on that, even if it doesn't do anything. I want to be able to click on that. I think this is all clickable, or what you're supposed to be able to click on it. It's been a while since I've looked at the flares. I think it's flares only, not chaff. Clickable, not clickable. One of, uh, actually, I'm not even sure there's a control. Scratch that. Uh, on the collective, I don't want the collective to be clickable particularly because uh, uh, I'm going to use that on a hotel binding. But it's nice that I can look. It's good that I can. That's not clickable, but I'll let them off there again. I don't need them clickable on the stick. That's okay. Let's see if we can have a look under there. 
Uh, what's this going to be? UHF? Question mark? Oh no, this is the ADF. It's just UHF. Can click on those buttons. Everything's making sounds as well as to say. Everything that's clickable on is making sounds. ADF, everything's... Whoa! That's weird. Everything's clickable on. It's kind of hard to get under there without taking off. So, I've been a little bit disappointed so far. I thought more, more would have been modelled in terms of, you know, what you can click on. Mm, compare it to a Huey or something where only about two of the controls aren't clickable. That stick's not clickable, but it's not supposed to be. You're supposed to control it with your stick. So, I'll let them off there. All of this is... All of this is, all of this is, or everything that needs to be clickable. Those aren't, that annoys me, should be clickable. These are, these are, um, I'm not even sure what that is. I don't know what that is. It looks like it should be clickable, but I don't say anything because I don't know. Um, I think that's everything. So, Everything in here feels good, and there's a good layout, and all the buttons look good. Uh, it's an impressive, you know, uh, it's just impressive. It is impressive. But annoyingly, lots of them are clickable, and that does annoy me. Especially if you're going to pay money. If it's a free module, fine. Leave off a load of buttons. Great. If you're going to pay your money for it, I want the effort put in for those miscellaneous buttons just to be able to click. It makes me feel better about it. In terms of the systems behind it, the RWR, pretty cool. The Nadir's cool. The ADF all works as far as I can remember well. Um, everything, all your autopilots and stuff work well. Screen here looks pretty cool, uh, or, you know, as it should do. As a rating, I think 4 out of 5 will suit it. It's just missing some bits there, isn't it, that would, uh, would have brought it up to 5. 4 out of 5 for detail and interactivity. Next, we've got to look at the flight model. This is where it gets a little bit ugly, um, as you might have been seeing this coming. Now, I kind of got the same problem with the Christian Eagle. This and the Christian Eagle, they're very high-performance aircraft. They can roll very quickly, they can turn very quickly, they can snap very quickly. And that type of module, like the Gazelle and the Christian Eagle, just don't, in my mind, really work for DCS very well. So when I'm looking to review a flight module, and I've done them all now, sorry, a flight model, I've done them all, so I've got a damn good feel for what these flight models are like. I'm not, I don't really care so much how realistic it is. Like I always say, if it's got through the quality control of DCS, I expect it to be realistic. That's something I expect it to be. Um, if, if ED have done their job right, which I'm sure they have. What I really care about is how it makes me feel, which is why it's hard to quantify flight models. Uh, most importantly, how does it make me feel like I'm flying a real helicopter? How does it make me feel like I'm flying a ton of aluminium and rubber? And it does not make me think I'm in a video game, and that's unfortunately where the gazelle breaks down. Now, I know I'll upset a lot of people because that people out there love flying their gazelles around. Um, and yes, this is personal opinion, but you guys ask for my opinion because I fly all the aircraft and so you're going to get my opinion. And my opinion is, even though this is supposed to be accurate in the way it flies, and I'm sure it is, you know, I'm sure they've got the turn rate right and the roll rate and the pitch rate and everything like that. But to fly it, to actually move my joystick around and have it feel like I'm flying a real helicopter. No, I don't know what a real helicopter uh, feels like to fly. It doesn't matter. No one who flies DCS flies a real helicopter, or like 0.0%. It's irrelevant. Your job as developing them as modules is to fool a non-helicopter pilot that he's flying to think that he's flying a real helicopter. That's your job. And this one just doesn't it just doesn't cut it. You see how quickly it moves and takes off and stops? That's my immersion gone right there. Look how quickly it's gone and see that? Transition. I can't feel, which is the only module in DCS where I can't feel the weight of it. And for some reason, my rudder's not working either. That's kind of annoying. I'll go and get a new plane. Obviously, something's screwed up with it. Oh, it turns out my tail had fallen off. Like I was saying, this is the only module in DCS where I can't feel the weight of it. Now, obviously, I can't actually physically feel the weight on my hands, but the way the vehicle reacts to how I move my stick, I should be able to feel momentum and inertia and weight. This one, just because of how it works, and I can't quantify that in any way at all, feels like I'm floating on a feather, and therefore it feels like I'm in a video game. And it's that horrible word there, feel. You know, the maker of the gazelle is going to say, well, what do you mean, feels wrong? What does it mean? And I can't tell you. I can't tell you why it feels like a video game, uh, but it does, to me. Uh, there's a little trick I can do to kind of dumb, dumb it down a bit, make it feel a bit heavier. Uh, and I've done a video about that. You can go and find that in our educational general section. It works uh, moderately, but still, still, you can't, you can't fake it. Go and fly a uh, Huey after this. Go and fly a Mi8. Go and fly a Ka50. 
and you will be able to feel, by the way it moves, the weight of it. It will feel like X amount of tons of metal. And this one sadly is missing that, which is such a shame because in every other way it's awesome. Graphics, awesome. Sound, that's pretty good. Capability, awesome. It can shoot down other helicopters for God's sake. It can go fast and it can do all these rolls and stuff like that. But I won't fly, I refuse to fly it simply because it doesn't feel right. Uh, that's why I do DCS. I want to feel like I'm flying a real plane. You know, um, any Tom, Sod, and Harry could uh, make an aeroplane that feels, you know, it doesn't feel right. But getting it to feel right is the job at the end of the day. I'm going to see if I can land on this thing. And I'm a, yeah, I know I'm a shit helicopter driver and always will be. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I'm good or I'm shit. It's got to feel right. So personally, uh, I think they should. I know no one ever listens to me anyway, but. Uh, I personally think they should go back and just add that little thing in, that little X factor that needs to add in, just to make it feel a bit more weighty. They have, if they did that, I would fly this all day long as my best helicopter. But I don't want to fly. I don't want to fly a video game. I want to fly something that feels real. Sorry to dwell on for that so long. What do you want me to say? Do you want me to lie and say like the other guys? Oh yeah, it's brilliant. It feels great. It feels great. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. So that's kind of overshadowed it a bit. I should have put the bad bit at the end. Uh, as for the good stuff, uh, you know, it can do crazy stuff, somersaults, rolls, stuff like that. I remember seeing the real helicopter air shows. I've seen lots of the real helicopter. I know exactly how it flies from exterior view, that is. Um, I think it differs a little bit to this, but I'm very liable to be wrong as well, so. Woohoo! Very easy to uh, overcook it, as we can see there. But it's amazing, amazing what it can do. If you want a helicopter that you don't care too much about the feel like me, you just want to do awesome stunts and go really fast and shoot stuff down, this is a great flight model to do that. Don't get me wrong. It performs very well. I just don't like the feel of it. Trying to justify my view. Look at that turn. Look at amazing compared to any of the other helicopters. Look at that. If anything, the difficulty is trying to keep the helicopter under control because it's so fast at manoeuvring, so fast at turning, so fast at rolling. Nothing else can keep up with it. Obviously, it's light and it's powerful. What else can we say? It's interaction with the ground is important. As a helicopter, you're going to be there in a lot of interaction with the ground, especially when you're first new and you crash into it. Uh, so, I should have the ability to scrape my, um, my skids along the ground like a Huey. A bit like that. See what I mean? That's good. We've got all that ability. Look. Not as easy as the Huey to do, but it's, it's fine. So to summarise that, the flight model does pretty much what the real helicopter does, you know, as far as we're aware, and uh, can do some pretty awesome stuff. Like I said, I just don't like the feel of it, and that's why I don't fly. So, we've got to give that a rating. It's a, it's a real sod to do. I'm going to give it 3 out of 5 for the positive and the negative reasons that I've said. I'm going to give it 3 out of 5. Next, we need to look at difficulty. So, when we're talking about difficulty, we're talking about between 1 and 5. 5 would be an A10C. 1 would be an A10A. You know, polar opposites. And it's how difficult it is to pick up this module. Learn 99% of its features. It's navigation systems. It's defense systems. It's offense systems. It's flight systems and stuff like that, and uh, and use the aircraft for what it's meant to be used for properly. And it's not that easy. It's somewhere in between, I guess. Learning the Nadir is going to take some reading. Learning the ADF is going to take some reading and some training. Learning the weapons properly uh, going to take some reading. Not massive amounts of reading, but some general operation. I mean, I can't fly it for shit. Um, it's going to take some uh, research, how to use the autopilots and whatnot. Um, so it's it's more difficult than average, I would say. Average being three, but because of its, I mean, in the air, it's easy to fly. This this thing is once you get used to the snappiness, it, you know, it's really snappy and sensitive. And you can tone that down, like I said, if you want. Um, I have not done for that for this video. You can tone it down a bit. Once you get used to its snappiness, it's a doddle to fly. It won't VRS like the other helicopters. Well, yeah, it's pretty much impossible to VRS this. Is that realistic? Absolutely no idea. No idea at all. It probably is, but um, I've just killed the rotor, which is kind of annoying, never mind. Uh, but it is easy to fly once you get used to it. Uh, and from that respect, I guess it kind of is actually quite a good starter chopper. Uh, easier to fly than a Huey or an MI-8. Uh, 
possibly even easier to fly than the KA-50 in terms of actual flight. So I've come to a decision. I'm going to rate it 3.5 out of 5, where I think the MI-8 was about 4, and I think the KA-50 was 4.5, big study level. So 3.5 for difficulty. Uh, I think it's going to be good. Next is the history. Uh, it came out in 2016. I haven't really flown it. You know exactly why I haven't flown it. I've told you. So I don't have um, many examples. One of the reasons why I left this till the end. I just don't have a lot of information about it. What I do know is the main feature that attracts this helicopter to people is its multi-crew ability. The idea you can have a human here and a human here. <clears throat> and I know since I tested that in my last tutorials I did, that doesn't work. I assume it doesn't work at the moment. I haven't got anyone to practice with at the moment. But I'm going to make the assumption, and I'm probably right, that it doesn't work at the moment. So that needs fixing, obviously. You know, people out there spending their money on this, it has to work. It have to have, it's a job you have to have fixed, have to get done. So that is a big one. Other than that, I don't know of any other problems. Again, I welcome you guys to tell me the problems, and I'll put them on the YouTube, and, um, and we'll record it that way. So to summarise, good-looking helicopter. It has good capabilities, air-to-ground, uh, or air to air its performance is excellent in terms of movement its flight model is expansive it can do a lot however if you're like me and you want it to feel good it's the best way i can say that then sorry it's just not for you unless you're well like things feeling like this sounds pretty good and it's not too difficult then this is for you i would recommend it for you i hope that was useful and I'll see you later